Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome into BTV's coverage of BR Girls Soccer. My name is Brian Berard. I'll be alongside with you for the next couple of hours as the BR Trojans welcome in the Brockton Boxers for Southeast Conference play. Now, because of the COVID-19 outbreak, conference-only schedule across the board for every team in the MIAA. So Brockton and BR will only play within the Southeast Conference. Bridgewater Rainham comes into today's game undefeated on the season, 5-0, and a perfect 3-0 at home. Brockton is 2-2. Strangely enough, though, the Boxers are undefeated on the road. They are 2-0 away from Marciano Stadium. Now, the biggest things here that you will notice in tonight's match is the rules changes that the MIAA had to enforce in order to get soccer to be played. No more will we have throw-ins, and that's actually a rule I don't mind, but there's a little wrinkle to it that I'm not a huge fan of. All kicks have to be indirect, and they have to be on the ground. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I do like how it's a free kick instead of a throw-in from the touchline. As you'll see here, uh, Brockton getting yet another corner going to play a touch on the ground and then you'll probably see a cross into the box and there it is and that's an easy save for Emily Fox outside of that also no shoulder contact is going to be allowed that'll be a uh, spot foul indirect kicked as well it's a, it's a change that a lot of players have to get used to. And, of course, the biggest change is you're also going to notice every player has to wear a mask pretty much at all times. So that's going to affect somewhat uh, the breathing. But I'm sure these players at, at a young age, uh, they're in better cardiovascular health than I am. Rather, it was a warm start to the evening here at Breachwater Rain. It has cooled off just a little bit, and the wind's picking up and going away from time to time. As we'll see, again, one of those indirect free kicks on the ground and across into the box is going to be a little short. That was Bianca Reynoso trying to go towards the near post, and it'll be a goal kick coming up here for Emily Fox, the senior goalkeeper for the Trojans. Plays that one on the ground towards the far side of the field. A nice step right there for the boxers to get possession back here and that's going to go in for another corner kick for the boxers already three or four in the early going here for brockton also see off in the far side uh, is the junior varsity squad taking on brockton on the grass field There's a short corner again played on the ground. Brockton trying to cross it into the box. Gets in there. Still not clear. Cleared but not out. Still in the box. Brockton still is able to maintain possession. And now it's finally cleared out by the Trojans towards midfield. Shouldered back in by Reardon. Still off towards the far side of the field. And that's going to be kicked out of bounds by Coelho. As mentioned before, Bridgewater Rainham undefeated this season, 5-0. These two teams met up for the first game of the year back on October 7th at Marciano Stadium, and it was a 6-0 victory for the BR Trojans. Hopefully they can pick up right where they left off in that game as Brockton turns this one over in the midfield. Nice ball up to Toftaru here. Toftaru in all alone. Toftaru goes far corner. Oh, just a little wide. A nice effort there from Cassie Toftaru, but the shot goes just wide, and it'll be a goal kick coming up here for the Boxers. Almost had a quick 1-0 lead here for the Trojans off a beautiful through ball there. Found Toftaru in stride, was in all alone, tried to go far post, just a little too wide. And Reynoso is going to get a further instructions from the far official here before taking the goal kick. <clears throat> uh, kind of a shank goal kick right there. Played off and towards the far corner, and that's going to be cleared out by the boxers, but Bridgewater Rainham still has possession. BR, just a strike just outside the box, and it's going to be 
an easy stave for Eilish Olmstead. Kicks this one out just shy of midfield. Trojan's able to keep this one. Toff through now. Plays this one off just a little too far for a streaking McKenna Columbus sophomore midfielder. So it'll be an indirect kick taken by Chiara Reynoso. And she'll play this one off for her sister Bianca Reynoso. Plays this one up still towards the near side. Still sent back in though by the Trojans. A little back and forth here in the neutral area of the field. Again, played forward by Jenna Quill. Toftaru still trying to win that battle against Reynoso. Can't quite win that battle. But a nice job there from Toftaru to stay with it. Keeps the ball in, cross. Not the best cross in the world. That'll go out of the byline for a goal kick for the boxers. Another big difference here as well in soccer this season. Instead of two 40-minute halves, it's going to be four 20-minute quarters with just a couple of minutes in between. Reynoso's goal kick. Going to land just shy of the 30-yard line. Going to get a free kick coming up here for the boxers. Kiara Reynoso plays that for her sister. Plays that one up ahead, and it's going to be cleared out by the Trojans. Back and forth battle so far in the early going. I would say Brock, though, doing a much better job of possessing the ball than Bridgewater Rainham is. Although, BR has had the better looks, probably. Here we go, Trojans yet again trying to find Toftaru. A little too far for her, still kept in though. And that looks like that's going to be offside. So a free kick coming up here for the boxers. Looks like that was Lillian Ford that couldn't quite stay onside for BR. The Ford is able to stop this free kick attempt. now. BR has another opportunity here. Toftaru again plays this one up ahead, and that's going to be a missed shot attempt right there from McKenna Columbus. Boxers trying to play this one towards the near side, and that's going to go out of bounds, but there's actually going to be a foul called on Cassie Toftaru, it looks like. So a free kick coming up here for the Boxers. Nil-nil in the early going here from Breachwater Rainham. Brian Berard here alongside with you. It's BR Girls Soccer against Brockton Girls Soccer here on Bridgewater Television. Again, play towards the near side. And this one's going to go out of bounds for another Brockton Boxers indirect kick. Kiara for Bianca. Plays this one up ahead towards the near side. Nice job here from the Trojans to try to dispossess the boxers. But again, good midfield play here from the boxers to try and keep possession as though this one gets dispossessed here from the Trojans. Places one way up towards the near sideline. Excellent job. Finds Lillian four across into the box. No one home, though, for the Trojans to put that one in. Boxers get away with one there, and it's still tied up at nil-nil. Lillian Ford now places one in towards the middle of the field. Back over towards that far touch line. Looks like that is Forbes Smith is able to keep that one in for the Trojans. Places one back towards midfield for Jenna Quill. Places one up again, trying to find Maya Darianani. Sister Rosalie played for BR for a few years. BR here still threatening into the attacking third of the field. Off towards the near side for Cassie Toftaru. Toftru has a little bit of space. Her cross is going to be deflected out of bounds by Bianca Reynoso. Just a little over 10 and a half minutes left in the first period. Still nil-nil here from Bridgewater Rainham. So Trojans will have an indirect free kick here from the near touch line. Towards the near corner. going to be taken by number nine. We don't have a number nine on the roster for you folks. We apologize for that. 
finds Toftaru now. Toftaru on her left foot, crosses it in towards the top of the box. Dangerous area right there. Brockton still can't clear it. In the box, shot on net, off the post! Another opportunity here, and that's gonna go well wide. Trojans again, almost getting another goal. This one clangs off the pipe. Should be a 2-0 Trojans lead, and the boxers are surviving so far. Reynoso's free kick, or excuse me, goal kick. Brockton still maintains possession, still in their defensive third. Now finally gets it out towards midfield. This one played well up ahead for nobody. This one's going to be tracked down by Catherine Allen. Allen turns this one over. Kept alive by Marion. It's going to go out of bounds and it'll be an indirect free kick here for the boxers. Kiara Reynoso to take this one. Plays it for her sister Bianca Reynoso towards the top of the box. Nice job there from Jara Rodriguez. Plays that one off the left foot. Still kept alive there from Jaeda Fernandez. And that's going to be cleared out. Not completely, though. Now it is going to be cleared out by Kylie Whitkiss. So Bianca Reynoso to... Excuse me, that's Kiara Reynoso to take this indirect free kick. Plays it off for her sister Bianca. And that's going to go out of bounds off of McKenna Columbus. <clears throat> Bianca Reynoso tries to cross this into the box. Doesn't get through. That's going to be cleared out by Allen now. Allen finds the foot of Lillian Ford. She can't advance the ball any further. Sent back in by the boxers. Allen now. Tries to win possession. Is going to pl play that one back for Emily Fox. And Fox is going to clear this one out for the Trojans. Finds the feet of Lillian Ford. Again, trying to find Ford again. It's going to be in a foot race. And it looks like Olmstead is going to win that race. She's in a foot race with Deline Souza. Olmstead's kick just shy of midfield. Kept alive momentarily by the Trojans. Now off towards the near side. Dispossessed there from Toftaru. And turns it right back over. And that's sent back in by Fernandez. And Quill will give chase to this one and clear this one out towards the near touchline for an indirect free kick coming up here for the Brockton Boxers. Very brief schedule for all the soccer teams. Again, only playing their conference and this is a time where it actually benefits you not playing in the old old colony league you would have had to play Barnstable and Dartmouth probably four times each just to get some sort of a schedule out there to get eight games but now in the Southeast Conference you only have to play each other once home and away to get an eight game schedule Fox's free kick, goal kick, excuse me, towards the near sideline. Found the foot of Ather Catherine Allen, found Toftaru. Bia is going to switch this one up, go towards the far touch line. Plays that one, trying to play it through. Dispossessed, though, by the boxers at midfield. Opportunity here now for the boxers. Manzueta plays this one in, and nobody home, and that'll be easily corralled by Emily Fox. Fox boots this one just shy of midfield. Looking for Forbes Smith. Bounces just in front of her. And that's going to be played now by Caitlin Reardon. Gets dispossessed, though. Forbes Smith plays this one up ahead towards the far side. Cross, cross into the box now, but no one home. Looks like that was Lillian Ford. Hesitated just a moment. Had a streaking Toftaru towards the near post. Olmsted now kicks this towards midfield. Off the shins of Lena Marion. Toftru places one back. Able to find Catherine Allen. Allen now places one towards the middle of the field. Finds Maya Darianani. Back over to Darianani again. Plenty of space for her. Place that one into the box and no one there. And it'll be a goal kick coming up here for the boxers. Goal 
goal kick from Reynoso. She went through a few players. Actually could have been played by Amelia Vieira. She decided not to play, and now Brockton has it again in their own defensive third of the field. Reynoso has to get around Toftaru. Plays this one towards the near side, and it's going to go off of the right foot of Jaeda Fernandez. And it'll be an indirect free kick here for the Trojans on the near touchline. Allen played that one in for Columbus. Now Toftaru. Toftaru's cross in the box over the goalkeeper. Off the foot and in! Goal for Bridgewater Random to open up the scoring. And Ava Ford-Smith is able to put home the cross. And the Trojans take a 1-0 lead off a beautiful feed from Cassie Toftaru over the jumping Olmstead. And Forbes Smith knew what she had to do. Wide open goal and puts it right in to give the Trojans a one goal lead in the first quarter. A nice cross again from Cassie Toftaru. And Ava Forbes Smith knew that she couldn't miss that one. Wide open goal and put it in. Restarting here at 1-0 in favor of the Trojans. Seems like Brockton have been doing a much better job of possessing the ball than Bridgewater Rainham did in the early going. But it seems that Bridgewater Rainham is one that is able to capitalize on the mistakes of Brockton. Still looks like a very much improved Brockton Boxers team from when the last time these two teams played. And again, as I mentioned, Brockton 2-0 on the road. So they are very good away from Marciano Stadium. And I think they know that the trick to beating a Bridgewater Rainham squad is to outpossess them and get better looks. But Bridgewater Rainham so far capitalizing on their look. Comes the indirect free kick here for the Trojans on that far touch line. Plays that one in towards the middle for McKenna Columbus. Gets dispossessed though. This one played up ahead, but Bridgewater Rainham is able to win possession back yet again. Columbus now plays this in towards the middle of the field. Was able to find Darianani, and now the boxers are able to clear this one out. But not completely, though. Bridgewater Rainham maintaining possession here. It looks like we're going to get a foul called here on the Trojans. And we are going to get an injured Brockton boxer. Restarting here, Bridgewater Rainham playing this one back towards the goalkeeper. That'll be a free kick taken, and Cassie Toftaru is able to keep this one in temporarily for the Trojans. Lillian Ford couldn't quite keep that one in for BR, but BR again still has possession, winning the battles here in the neutral area of the field where Brockton was winning them just a few moments ago. Trojans now in an opportunity. Towards the top of the box, looking for Toftaru. Toftaru, left shot, just wide. Cassie Toftaru, his second shot, has gone just wide of the post. She has been everywhere inside that 18-yard box. Should be a 3-0 lead here for the Trojans. But Cassie Toftaru can't quite get the luck of the roll here. Still 1-0, though, for the Trojans, as Reynosa will take a free kick towards the near side of the 6-yard box. Toftaru plays that one towards the middle of the field. Darianani giving chase. Trojans still have possession here. Plays this one back towards the middle of the field to regroup. Jenna Quill now. Pass that one off. Back over to Jenna Quill. Played up ahead towards the middle of the field. Looking for Columbus. And cleared out by the boxers. But again, Bridgewater Rain and winning the battle in the middle portion of the field. Marion now has this one for the boxers. Tries to split two Trojan defenders. Not gonna happen there as Coelho is able to dispossess her. Forbes Smith now places one towards the middle of the field for Jaeda Fernandez and she turns the ball right back over and the Trojans have an opportunity yet again. Darianati towards the far side of the field for Forbes Smith, her cross low and that's gonna be cleared out by Reynoso. But again, Bridgewater Rain am able to keep it in. Maya Darianani plays this one back. Now towards the middle of the field, is able to find McKenna Columbus. Now over to Cassie Toftaru. She's going to lose that one, and that's going to be played up by Amelia Vieira. And again, she gets dispossessed. Trojans now in the middle of the field, looking for Toftaru on the near touchline. 
Able to keep it in. Toftaru, cross. It's going to get deflected out of bounds by Bianca Reynoso. So it'll be an indirect free kick. Clock stopped at two minutes. So we are at the discretion of the referee. Cross. <laughs> Toftaru tried to cross that one. Actually hit the head of McKenna Columbus. And now an indirect free kick will be taken by Katherine Allen. For Columbus, back to Allen. Back over to Columbus now, just outside the box. Her cross It's going to go off the right shin of a Trojans player, goes out of the byline. And it'll be a boxer's free kick. Should be nearing the end of this second, or excuse me, this first quarter. Been a long two minutes from the referees here. Trojans now have this one up towards the far touch line. That's going to be an indirect free kick coming up for BR. Daria Nani now has this one for the Trojans. Good foot, footwork right there. Plays this one up for Forbes Smith. Forbes Smith now plays that one back in towards the middle of the field. Trojans trying to find another offensive attack. Columbus now plays this one up ahead. And it looks like that is going to be the end of the first quarter. And the Trojans have a 1-0 lead. <laughs> Welcome back to Bridgewater Rainham. Brian Berard alongside with you here is Bridgewater Rainham Girls Soccer against Brockton Boxers here on BTV. Trojans have a 1 0 lead, courtesy of an Ava Forbes, Ava Forbes Smith goal on a nice cross from Cassie Toftaru. Second quarter here. One of the biggest differences, again, because of the COVID outbreak and some rules changes here for the MIAA. Four 20-minute quarters instead of two 40-minute halves. The clock will stop at the two-minute mark at the end of every quarter. The last two minutes will be up to the referee's discretion. Brockton now restarting here on the near touch line. Cross into the box, and that's going to be... Oh, what a beautiful save from Emily Fox! Had she not got up there, that would have been a nice chip shot goal from Lena Marion. And it was a beautiful save from Emily Fox to keep this one at 1-0. Toftru tries to keep this one in on the far touch line and is able to do so. See if the Trojans get a little bit of momentum from that beautiful save from Emily Fox. Trojans here threatening. Toftru on the far touch line now. Trying to get around her defender. Excellent defensive work right there from Ella Silverman to dispossess Toftaru and get the boxer's possession. Although the Bridgewater Rainham is able to win possession here yet again. Dirianani now has this one for the Trojans. Plays that one off for Columbus. Poor touch there and Brockton is able to get possession of this one now. Plays this one on towards the near side for Rodriguez. Rodriguez plays this one up ahead. It's going to be a little too far. And that's going to be played back to Emily Fox by Jenna Quill. Brockton's able to keep this one in temporarily and battle for it on the far touch line. And that's going to be an indirect free kick. <clears throat> Seeing what a lot of 
players are doing is it's an indirect free kick. They pretty much barely tap the ball, although play it into one of their teammates that's a few feet away from them. And that's where you get your now direct free kick. So Trojans do just that. Both squads have been doing that all afternoon so far. So the Trojans now have this on the far touch line. Plays this one up ahead. Looks like trying to find a streaking Lillian Ford able to get it. Tries to play that towards the middle of the field. BR still has possession here. Darianani now plays this one up ahead. A beautiful opportunity here. Shot's going to go a little wide from Emily Shea. Lexi looks like Emily Shea is going to be just offside. Still a good idea, though, from Bridgewater Rainham. And another thing, too, is we're going to have to see a lot of delays here, especially when the ball goes out of play over the fence. Uh, normally, you have some players that are able to chase the ball down or have some assistants that are able to chase the ball down. We're not going to have that this year. And if you, as you'll see Pete Smith, the trainer, off in the background, you have to play it with your foot. You can't pick it up. If you're trying to even help out, you still have to play it with your foot. The only players that are truly allowed to touch the ball are going to be the goalkeepers, and they have gloves on anyways to help protect their hands off some hard shots. So if the ball does go out of play, there are some soccer balls that are going to be placed just around the pitch. So hopefully av avoid some delays. But if it does go beyond the fence and there's no available soccer ball, you're going to have to wait and hope someone can get it or someone plays a, a free soccer ball from somewhere else uh, just outside the field. This one's going to be played up by Catherine Allen, but this one's going to be played back into the attacking third for the boxers, and this one's tried to be cleared by Jenna Quill. Quill's able to get possession of it again. It's going to be an indirect free kick on the far touch line coming up for the Trojans. 1-0 lead for the Trojans off an Ava Forbes-Smith's goal. Off a nice cross from Cassie Tofteru, who's in the early running for player of the game, has been pretty much everywhere for the Trojans, especially around the 18-yard box. Plays this one up ahead, and that's going to go out of bounds for an indirect free kick for the Boxers. That'll be turned over, so it'll be an indirect free kick coming up here for Bridgewater Rainham. <clears throat> BR now plays this one in towards the middle of the field, is able to find Columbus. Trying to go towards the middle of the field a little too far, and Brockton's now able to put this one in the attacking third, but cleared out by the Trojans. Again, Brockton sends this one in, and it's going to find the hands of Emily Fox. Fox plays this one on the ground for Jenna Quill. Nice pass right there to split two boxers defender. Excellent passing right here. Tic-tac-toe passing from the Trojans. That guy, that's turned over by Emily Shea. In towards the top of the box, and Emily Fox again is able to corral that one from a streaking Elena Marion, senior forward for the Brockton Boxers. <clears throat> Fox's kick just over the 40 yard line. It's gonna bounce around a couple of times in front of Emily Shea. Trojans are able to keep possession of this one. Shea now has this again on the near side of the field. Dribbles towards the middle of the field, passes this one off for Columbus, gets dispossessed there by Jaida Fernandez. Nice job there from Columbus to stay with her. Win the ball back here for the Trojans. Goes out of bounds, so it'll be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Boxers. I do like the... the. I would rather have a direct free kick that you can play in the air as a rule going forward in soccer. I, I'm not a huge fan of the throw, and especially on a turf field like this. The ball is just going to bounce around. You've seen it plenty of times already here in the first half. The ball is just going to continually bounce around and on a grass field that you're going to get a lot more give but I actually do like having a direct free kick coming from the touchline but hopefully uh, next year we won't have any of these restrictions 
Of course, with the COVID-19 outbreak, a very, very limited schedule. Only can play in your conference. Uh, boys and girls soccer playing. Field hockey playing. No football. Well, you could have played football if you wanted to do seven-on-seven seven, no tackle, which they are doing up in New Hampshire. But here in Massachusetts, have decided to go against that. But it's still great that we get some form of sport for these kids to play, especially for the seniors, because at the collegiate level, going back to last spring, every spring athlete got a fifth year of eligibility if you were a senior. For the high school kids, if you were a spring athlete last year and you were a senior, unfortunately, you played your last game. And for a lot of those kids that aren't going to play at the collegiate level, they played their final game and they didn't even know it. And I, I can only help but just feel bad for the spring athletes that had the season ripped away from them. And at least, and when we thought maybe even now the fall students were going to have this ripped away, but at least now you see here these girls, the seniors, they get to have their senior season. They get to have their senior day and they have this moment because a lot of these players aren't going to go on and play at the collegiate level. And they have, even though it's just an eight game season, which is different than I think normally they play a 20 game season, they get something, which I think is amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of restrictions. You have to wear a face mask. You can't have uh, fans in the stands. You can't make the shoulder contact, the indirect free kicks from the touchline. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions and a lot of people saying that it's not soccer. But, hey, at least it's something now for especially these seniors. The Trojans now have another opportunity to cross into the box. No one home. That's going to be easily corralled from Olmstead. And not just the soccer players, the field hockey players also get to have a season track and field gets to still have meets i believe track and field still get to have some meat it is and it is just it's unfortunate for the football players and there is going to be an attempt i believe to play next spring next summer hopefully the pandemic is much more controlled then than it is now and now we also have to look towards the winter sports what what's going to happen with the winter sports those are still up in the air and even going to the collegiate level locally here Bridgewater State they play in the MASCAC they decided they're not going to have fall sports period so that's just unfortunate for them although again you are granted an extra year of eligibility so you do still get your senior season and this is going to be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans and a pretty good oper a pretty good spot here on the field. Indirect, here's the cross into the box. It's going to go towards the top of the box and no one home. So this will easily be cleared out by Ella Silverman. A little contact there, no call. Keep playing, play on, there you go. And that one's finally going to be cleared out by Delaney Umbriana. Bridgewater Rainham girls soccer next game is going to be on the 30th, the night before Halloween, at 5.30 when they take on the New Bedford Whalers. And on the boys' side, their next game will be the 28th at home at 5.30. They'll take on the West Bridgewater Wildcats, a non-conference game. Of course, the girls' team also played West Bridgewater. The boys also have a game on November the 4th against Durfee, and their final home game will be on November the 6th against Dartmouth. Both those games against Durfee and Dartmouth will be at 4 p.m., and both senior nights will be captured on BTV, so don't you worry. If you have a player that is playing in their final soccer game of their high school career, it will be seen on Bridgewater Television and online. Don't forget to check out the BTV YouTube page as well. Catch up with Jeff Fowler's weather forecast. It's a free kick here from the Brockton Boxers, easily saved by Emily Fox. Check out BTV's uh, YouTube page, BTV Access Corp. And BTVAccess.com. 
As I mentioned, Jeff Fowler's weather forecast, John Lux, Bridgewater Now and Bridgewater Updates. Get all the latest up-to-date news on everything happening in Bridgewater and the South Shore area. And also you can check out Out of Bounds with John Luck and Mary Evers. New podcast edition of that also is going to be simulcast online. Also can check out all the local town council meetings and school committee meetings as well as other programming on BTV's YouTube page and our website and on demand at btvaccess.com. If you watch this at btvaccess.com, you will have the ability to download this game to have this forever and ever in your archives. This one will go out of the byline, so it'll be a corner coming up here for the Trojans. It's amazing what the crew here at BTV has done even during this pandemic, still trying to provide any sort of programming that we can. Of course, we've also been replaying some old sports games here. Some classic BR games. Cross into the box here for the Trojans, and that's going to be cleared out by the boxers. And there's a lot of contact there. Jenna Quill kind of throws the hands up as to questioning what she did. And a little bit of contact, so it'll be an indirect. Actually, this will be a direct free kick coming up here for the boxers. And Reynoso's free kick. It's going to be cleared out by the Trojans, but still kept alive by the boxers. That's played ahead by Alexandra Manzueta. And that'll be a goal kick coming up here for Emily Fox. Places one off towards the near side of the field and Shea can't keep that one in. That'll be an indirect free kick for the boxers. Chelsea Bourne to take this one and place that one up ahead for Fernandez. And that's going to go into the box for no one there. And Emily Fox is able to crowd that one easily. It's actually going to go out of the byline, so it'll be a goal kick coming up here for the Trojans. Just about halfway done, maybe a little bit more than halfway done here with this second quarter. Bridgewater ran in with a 1-0 lead, courtesy of an Ava Forbes-Smith goal. Two boxers let the ball bounce around, had no idea what to do with it. Boxers still temporarily had possession now. Bridgewater Rainham has this one towards the near touch line. That's going to go out of bounds for an indirect free kick. feel like I'm going to be saying that a million more times throughout this game. Chelsea Bourne to take this one. Freshman midfielder and defender for the Boxers. Getting some time on the varsity squad as a freshman. This one played for Caitlin Reardon, who now will send this one up ahead towards the near side. Trying to find Jaida Fernandez. That's going to go off the touchline. That'll be another indirect free kick coming up here for the Brockton Boxers, who are trying to get above 500 on the season, trying to get their record to 3-2. and Breachwater Rainham trying to improve to 6-0 and 4-0 at home. Boxers still trying to stay undefeated on the road. So something's got to give in this game. Someone's perfect record. He is going to be tarnished at the end of this one. Although, again, as I said in the first quarter, Brockton, the first game that these two teams met up was on the seventh, and it was a 6-0 win for the Trojans. And I would have to say Brockton, although they have they have survived nicely, it really should be 3, maybe even 4-0 in favor of the Trojans. But Brockton has actually done a much better job of possessing in this game so far, especially in the early going of that first quarter. And now the boxers will have a corner kick coming up here. Looks like Ellis Silverman, another freshman for this boxers squad. A young Brockton boxers team. Corner towards the top of the box, and that's going to be a shanked kick 
right there from Elena Marion. In towards the top of the box. Trojans are able to clear that one, but not completely. Now the Trojans are able to clear this one completely. Towards the middle of the field. Looking for Ava Forbes-Smith, junior forward. We are still able to maintain possession, but Brockton now able to dispossess the Trojans. Ten freshmen for this Brockton Boxers team. Wow! This is going to be a team to watch out for in the future. You have ten players on the varsity squad. A good amount of them are playing in the game right now. Getting some valuable time here. I love that move from Rolando Lopes, head coach there of the Brockton Boxers. And Brockton's youth soccer program is one of the best, if not the best, in southeastern Massachusetts. Their men's soccer team a few years ago won the state championship. And a lot of times uh, when they played their uh, travel soccer leagues, uh, outdoors and indoors, a lot of times it was Brockton that was the one hoisting, hoisting the trophy at the end. A very good youth Brockton soccer program that they have going on there. And you have, as I said, 10 freshmen. This is going to be a team that you have to watch out for, I'd say, in the next few years. As will you will for Bridgewater Rainham. I mean, they don't have any freshmen playing on this roster. They have a few sophomores, a good amount of juniors and seniors. And Tim Califf is able to, has been able to always consistently do an amazing job with his players. Just a few years ago, he had not one, not two, but three Division I players on his roster. Lost them all to graduation and was still able to get back to the South Sectional Tournament just a year ago. It looks like the Trojans are well on their way again to another South Sectional appearance. Of course, you had Bethany Dunk, who's the goalkeeper, plays for UNH. Brooke Cavino, a striker, plays for URI. And CeCe Barron, a midfielder, now plays for Merrimack College. Had three Division I players. You'd lose all three and you think that you're, you know the season's over and still was able to have a rather successful season last year. And just as I said, too, Brockton has a good youth soccer program, as does Bridgewater. Feels like Bridgewater is always winning some sort of state championship every few years, especially on the girls' side. And we should be nearing the end of the first half here from Bridgewater Rainham. I think we're just going to get this indirect free kick and then the whistle. And that is going to do it here for the first half. Trojans with a 1 0 lead, courtesy of Ava Forbes Smith. We'll have the second half right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School. Brian Berard along with you for BR Girls Soccer on Bridgewater Television. Bridgewater Rainham and the Brockton Boxers doing battle here today in their second of two games. BR with a 1 0 lead, courtesy of an Ava Forbes Smith goal on a nice feed from Cassie Tofteru. And as I was saying before, the end of the first half, you know, Brockton and Bridgewater both have great youth soccer programs, as does Rainham. And I feel like we should be mentioning a very key part to the soccer world that we unfortunately lost last year. And that was Dick Sproles, one of the most amazing people that you will ever meet, was an amazing coach, was an amazing referee. An all-around great guy. I had the chance to work alongside Dick Sproles uh, at the Bridgewater Sports Complex. Always came in with a smile and was able to brighten your day and was able to joke with you and share some very valuable life lessons. And the soccer world will uh, 
never get a guy again like that. And I'm sure he's able to smile down on us here today as we are able to still play soccer even during uh, this COVID-19 outbreak. So the Trojans now have this towards the far side of the field. That'll go out of bounds off of Brockton, so that'll be an indirect free kick. Coelho will take this one for the Trojans. This one towards the near side of the field for Allen. Plays this one up ahead, a little too far. It's going to find the feet of Reynoso, and that's going to be deflected out of bounds by McKenna Columbus. Just under 18 minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Trojans with a 1 0 lead. Reynoso plays this one up ahead. Nice job there from Brianna Reed to keep that one in for the Trojans. A lot of space here. Poor touch there from Maya Darianani, and that'll be Boxer's ball in the far touch line, but that's going to go out of bounds, and it'll be a Trojans indirect free kick. Places one back towards midfield. Now places one up ahead. Reed has this one again for the Trojans. A lot of space. Looks like she was trying to find Emily Shea. Excuse me, that was Lillian Ford, I believe she was trying to find. Brockton's able to take possession. This one is played up ahead by Caitlin Reardon. Trojans now able to win possession yet again on the far touchline. It'll be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans. Trojans now playing this one just in front of their own box. Played up ahead towards the middle of the field. Columbus is able to have this one now. Has a streak in Forbes Smith. They're able to find her. Forbes Smith gets the ball just by the byline. Nice move to bring it back in. Crossing the box. That's going to be cleared easily by the boxers. But it'll be a corner kick coming up here for the Trojans. Forbes Smith plays that one for Catherine Allen. Allen's cross into the box. Still bouncing around in the box. Still not cleared out by the boxers. Played up in the air. Columbus now tries to play this one back overhead. And that's going to go out of bounds. And it'll be an indirect free kick. And no soccer ball available. So referee is going to have to chase this one down. It's just approaching under 15 and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Still a 1-0 lead here for the Trojans. Reynoso plays this one off for her sister, Kiara to Bianca. Kept alive, though, by the Trojans. Played out of bounds, and that'll be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans. Looks like Chelsea Bourne couldn't keep that one alive. I beg your pardon, that was Jara Rodriguez couldn't keep that alive for the boxers. <clears throat> Played up ahead now by the Trojans. Finds Ford in towards the middle of the field. Back for Lillian Ford. Plays that one up ahead. No one making a run in the immediate area for the Trojans, so easily corralled by Eilish Olmsted. Her kick goes towards the middle of the field. Played up ahead by the boxers. Couldn't be advanced any further by Elena Marion. And that'll be a Trojans ball now towards the middle of the field. Nice little turn back there. Places towards the middle of the field yet again, and now places back for one of the fullbacks. Off towards the near side now for Catherine Allen. Good passing right here from the Trojans. Try to establish some possession. A little too strong of a pass, though, right there. Columbus couldn't corral that one. This one's still kept alive by the Trojans. Now played up ahead. A nice through ball there by Jara Rodriguez, but no one for Brockton in the immediate area able to make a good enough run to put a shot on Emily Fox. Free kick goes towards the near sideline. 
Kiara Reynoso trying to keep that alive for the boxers. Couldn't quite do that. Gets dispossessed. Reed now has the ball here for the Trojans. Plays this off for Forbes Smith on the near side. Now plays that one back for Catherine Allen, who plays that in towards the middle of the field, looking for Brianna Reed. A little too far for her, although is able to temporarily get the ball, and that's sent back in now by Brockton. And it looks like that was Elena Marion making a run for the boxers, and Emily Fox again is able to stop that attempt by the, the Trojans. Excuse me, by the boxers. <clears throat> nice job right there towards that far touchline to win possession for the boxers. That was Jarrett Rodriguez. And we have a foul called here. It looks like this will be one of those rare direct free kicks coming up here for the boxers. <clears throat> In towards the box. Opportunity and a nice save right there from Emily Fox. Almost had a nice little goal right there from the boxers. Looks like that was Lena Marion that had the opportunity there. It was either Lena Marion or Jara Rodriguez had the opportunity there for the boxers. And Emily Fox is able to stop yet another boxers attempt. Indirect free kick on the far touchline, just near midfield here for the boxers. This one played up ahead by Caitlin Reardon. Forbes Smith, though, has the ball temporarily for the Trojans and now played back in by Brockton. Battle for the ball towards midfield. Kylie Whitkiss wins that battle. Able to play that one back for Allen. Now places up on the near side, looking for Columbus well too far for her and Reynosa. He's going to chase this one down and then clear that one out on the near touch line. It'll be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans. Catherine Allen, a senior midfielder, will take the indirect free kick. See who she plays this one off to. Looks like it'll be McKenna Columbus back over to Allen, gets deflected, still not cleared out though by the boxers, now it is, but it's still gonna be another indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans. Forbes Smith now, nice little turnaround there to play this one towards the top corner of that box. Goes out of bounds and it's going to remain with Bridgewater Rainham. Just under 10 and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Still a 1-0 lead for the Trojans. Forbes Smith plays this one in. Trojans now playing this towards the middle of the field. Brianna Reed, nice job right there. Reed shot, and it's gonna be an easy save right there from Olmstead. Nice read though, nice try, I should say, from Brianna Reed, sophomore midfielder for the Trojans. I feel like a lot of times players, they, they're a little too afraid to shoot as we get a foul called here. And it'll be a direct free kick coming up for the boxers. Even though it's from distance, you have a shot. You have an opportunity in a lane. You think you can make it. Why not take the shot? This one played up ahead by Jaeda Fernandez. Going to be a little too far there for Lena Marion. And it'll be another indirect free kick coming up here. For the boxers, and a pretty good opportunity. A pretty good spot of the field. Kiara Reynoso will take this one. Plays this one off for Jaeta Fernandez. Back over to Reynoso. Reynoso's cross, and that's going to be... I thought it was deflected. They're going to say that was just off her foot, and it'll be a goal kick coming up here for the Trojans. Now places one up ahead. Nice job right there 
from the boxers to take possession back. That was Alexandra Manzueta. Still played back in, but it's going to be deflected by McKenna Columbus. Brockton trying to get some sort of possession going here. Towards the far touch line is Manzueta. Plays this one up ahead, and it's going to be just a little too far. Trying to find Chelsea Bourne. That one's cleared out. That'll be another corner kick for the Brockton Boxers. Waiting to see if we can get a, another free ball here. Looks like we're going to get one here from the Trojans bench. Chelsea Bourne standing over the ball. She's going to play this one off. Do we get a cross into the box here? No, we don't. Excellent defensive work right there from Maya Darianani. Prevent that Brockton Boxers attempt, although the Boxers still have it here in the attacking third of the field, trying to split two defenders. Nothing doing there. Nice job from Cassie Toftrude. Dispossess Lena Marion. That's going to go out of bounds, and it'll be an indirect free kick. Question is who is in favor of? It looks like it's going to be in favor of the Trojans. Under nine minutes left here in the third quarter. Still a 1-0 lead here for the Trojans. Stop through, played that one off towards the far side. Gets dis dispossessed, though. Nice job there from Jara Rodriguez. And there is going to be a foul called, and a direct free kick will be taken from just outside the 18-yard box here from the Boxers. Potentially a good opportunity here for Brockton if they want to tie up the game. Looks like that's Jara Rodriguez. And Elena Marion standing over it. Marion now crosses that one into the box. No one home. Still no one able there to clear it. Brockton still has possession there. Towards that near corner, Jaeda Fernandez plays that one in. Still not cleared out. Trojans are able to finally clear it, but not completely out. Still kept alive, and a nice job right there from McKenna Columbus, but there's going to be a foul called and another direct free kick from just outside the 18-yard box coming up here for the boxers. Jarrett Rodriguez looks like she will be the one taking the free kick. Just about 28 or so yards away from the goal. Free kick just over the crossbar. And that's going to be a free kick coming up here. Excuse me, a goal kick coming up here for Emily Fox. Nice job there from Jara Rodriguez. Get a little bit of lift on it and try to just get it over the fingertips of Emily Fox. I feel like the, maybe a better option was try to go towards one of the corners. Still, nonetheless, a good defensive job right there from Emily Fox. She probably easily would have got some fingertips on. I don't know if it would have gone in or not. But still, a nice-looking shot there from Jara Fernandez. But still a 1-0 Trojans lead. This one goes out of bounds on the far touch line. Played in now by the boxers. I will say this, the Trojans are doing a fantastic job in the neutral area of the field, really not allowing Brockton to get into the attacking third and get any really good open chances here. This one now played up by Kylie Whitkiss is able to find Columbus. Columbus now plays this one up ahead for herself, but there's going to be a foul called here, and the ref is pointing as if it's going to be a Trojans free kick. Don't know why the ref didn't allow uh, advantage there, but nonetheless, we have a direct free kick coming up here from the Trojans. Looks like McKenna Columbus had an opportunity to try to even bring that one into the box or have a cross, but the ref called a foul there, not playing advantage. And the Trojans turn it over there. Unfortunate event there for the Trojans. But a nice job there from Jenna Quill to keep the ball alive here for the Trojans. Although Chelsea Bourne, though, on the far touch line. In a race, Chelsea Bourne plays that one up ahead, and that's going to be cleared out by Jenna Quill. 
Coelho there defensively for the Trojans, preventing Chelsea Bourne from trying to get anywhere. And one of 10 freshmen on this Brockton Boxers squad. Tries to play that towards the top of the box, and there's, there's going to be a foul, looks like. And looks like Kylie Whitkiss is going to take this free kick for the Trojans. The boxers still trying to get any sort of offense going here. And Bridgewater ran them again in the neutral area of the field, not allowing them to really get anything going. I mean, yeah, they'll get possession in the neutral area of the field, but Bridgewater ran them is able to just thwart any attempt that they have. Feels like a majority of this third quarter, though, has been played in the neutral area of the field, although Bridgewater ran them has a nice opportunity here in the attacking third, but that's cleared out, though, by the boxers. Darianani giving chase, trying to force a turnover here. And that one is able to be corralled by Coelho, and that's going to go out of bounds for an indirect free kick for the Boxers. Played that one for Reardon, played that one up ahead. Cleared out, though, by Jenna Quill. Contact there with Manzuetta, and there is going to be a foul called on the Trojan, so another direct free kick coming up here. Looks like Reardon was going to take this one for the boxers. Nope, they're going to make it an indirect free kick. But still, Reardon was the one that sent that ahead for the boxers. Forbes Smith now plays this one up ahead, trying to find Toft Drew. Is actually able to find McKenna Columbus. Now towards the far touchline, a little too behind Maya Darianani, junior midfielder for this Trojan squad. Approaching the end of the third quarter here. One nil lead for the Trojans, courtesy of an Ava Forbes Smith goal on a nice feed from Cassie Tofteru in the first quarter. Brock now threatening here in towards the box, and that's going to be cleared out. It'll be an indirect free kick towards the corner. Oh no, they're going to rule this a goal kick. They're going to say that that went off of Brockton. And that's going to be a goal kick coming up here for the Trojans. Nice little break right there for BR. Couldn't really quite see it from my vantage point, but if the ref says it once uh, went out of bounds, I'll take his word for it. Fox's goal kick, low line drive, is actually kept into the attacking third there by the Trojans, a shot on net, and that's going to be easily saved by Emily Fox. This should be the end of the third quarter coming up here soon. <clears throat> Sends this one high into the sun-setting sky. Forbes Smith now able to trap that one on the turf. Places one up ahead, and no one home. And that is the end of the third. 1-0 for the Trojans. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School. Brian Berard along with you here for BR Girls Soccer on Bridgewater Television. Trojans with a 1-0 lead going into the fourth quarter over the Brockton Boxers. It looks like Bridgewater Rainham has been threatening pretty much all afternoon into the evening here. Trying to get that insurance goal to go up 2-0. 
Brockton, though, trying to get the tire, or the game tying goal, I should say. Not the tire, not the car part. And they're trying to stay undefeated on the road to move the record to 3-0 and on the road, 3-2 and overall. Bridgewater ran him looking to stay undefeated at home. Which make them 4-0 and at home and 6-0 and overall. But we still have one 20-minute period left to play here at bridgewater Rainham. Lena Marion now trying to beat several bridgewater Rainham defenders. Can't, and that gets cleared out by the Trojans all the way back towards midfield for the boxers. Deline Souza plays that one up ahead, and that's going to be a little too far for Caitlin Reardon. So it'll be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans on the near sideline. Liliana Coelho takes this one. Plays that one in, it looks like, for Jessica Davis. Sophomore midfielder for the Trojans. Toff through now on the near side. Plays that one up for Davis. Davis in the middle of the field. Looks like she was trying to play that one off towards the far side. Got dispossessed, though. Forbes Smith, though, able to win the ball back here for the Trojans. Plays it right back up for her. Forbes Smith finds her feet. Up for Darian Nottie. Nice little feed. Darian Nadi in alone again. And a one-timer goes a little wide. Another opportunity from Cassie Toftaru, and it can't go home. Looks like Cassie Toftaru had a little bit of time there if she wanted to maybe try to take a touch and dribble it. Instead, she went for the one-timer and went wide of that far post. Just seems like Cassie Toftaru is poised to get a goal. Already has assist on the night. She wants to get the goal as well. Brockton now plays this one up ahead. Maybe trying to find a streak in Chelsea Bourne, but I don't know if she was going to be able to get to that one. Even if it did get through, she was well behind. Bridgewater Rainham now going into the attacking third here. Reed plays this one up. Again, Toftru in a race into the box. It's going to be deflected, goes out of bounds. Now it looks like that's going to go off of Bianca Reynoso. One of the, again, I don't know how many times I'm going to keep saying it. Ten freshmen for this Brockton Boxers women's soccer team. Forbes Smith now. Nice move from Forbes Smith. Gets in the box. Cross it in there. Clear it out. Almost a dangerous clear right there. But the Boxers were able to get that one out, but not completely. Again sent back in towards the box and still cleared out again by... Brockton, but not completely. Toftru now, just outside the box on the near side. Nice move again from Toftru on her left foot. Crosses it in. Clear, not, not completely, though. Still in the box for the Trojans. This one's finally going to be cleared out by the boxers. Alexandra Manzueta clears this one out for the boxers to prevent a second bridgewater Rainham goal. This one's going to be played back for Emily Fox. Chips this one a little high. And able to corral that one a little bit is Coelho, though. Turns it over. Boxers with an opportunity. Shot on net. Blocked by Kylie Witkus. And now that's going to be cleared out by Catherine Allen. Be interested to see what the players think of the four quarters instead of the two halves. Because to talk about... Another sport, basketball at the collegiate level. The men play two halves, but the women play four quarters. And I feel like the four quarters, the game flows a lot better. And they actually found out at the women's level at college in basketball when they went to the quarters, the game was actually, I think, about five to seven minutes shorter. And again, I just I feel like it has a lot better flow. I'd just be interested to see what soccer players think of the four quarters. And I know, I know soccer is traditionally played with two minute, uh, two 45 minute halves. And at the high school level, it's two 40 minute halves. Same as the, the I guess actually the collegiate level is 45 minute halves. But interesting to see if the, the players think and the coaches, especially, I guess, see if the game flows a little bit better with the uh, four 20 minute quarters instead of the two 40 minute halves. I feel like the game is going roughly the same amount of time. As Toftaru now has an opportunity. Oh, what a save from Olmstead! Toftaru again just can't put it home. In the box off the left foot in a beautiful diving save 
from Eilish Olmsted to keep this one 1-0. One this game could easily be 5 or 6 nil in favor of the Trojans if it wasn't for Olmsted in the post and some wide shots here from the Trojans. And again, Bridgewater Raynham on the attack again. Reed, nice little move. Was able to meg her defender, but boxers are able to get possession here. Toftru again now plays this one up ahead. Looking for a Brianna Reed. Reed now has this one. Tries to go to her left foot, is able to do so. Nice move from Reed. Reed cross into the box, clear it out, not completely, and that is going to be a corner kick coming up here for the Trojans. Nice footwork there from the sophomore midfielder, Brianna Reed. Looks like we're waiting on Cassie Toftru to finish tying her, her boot. Plays this one off for Toftaru. Now over to Coelho. Coelho now is going to bring this one back towards midfield. Caught a sleeping Bridgewater Rainham Trojan. Now Brockton. Can they get a counterattack going? Plays this one up ahead, and it's going to be just a little too far for Jara Rodriguez, the junior midfielder. Good opportunity. Good look, though, for the boxers. Just a little too far for Rodriguez. Had they been able to connect, who knows? Could have been a one nil game, although she did have a defender right on her. Looking for any sort of help. Nice dribbling right here. Again, we apologize. No number nine on the roster here for Bridgewater Rainham. On the far side of the field for Abby Stack. And that's going to be an indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans. Stack, a senior midfielder for BR. Finds Forbes Smith now. Tries to get around the boxers. Defender can't. Goes out of bounds. It'll be another indirect free kick coming up here for the Trojans. <clears throat> Forbes Smith now places one in towards the middle of the field. Looking for Brianna Reed. Gets dispossessed, though, by Alexandra Manzueta. Bridgewater Anim still able to get possession back here. Plays it into the box. And no one home for the Trojans. Easily corralled by Olmstead. Her kick just shy of midfield, though. Kept alive by the Trojans. Catherine Allen plays that one up for Forbes Smith. Back over towards the far side of the field. Able to find Forbes Smith again in towards the box for Toftru. Toftru now, open lane, shot and score! Cassie Toftru, it was only bound to happen. It was a matter of time that Cassie Toftru was going to put one behind Olmstead, and she does. And there is that insurance goal that the Trojans were looking for. 2 0 in favor of Bridgewater Rainham, courtesy of Cassie Toftru. She has been everywhere inside that 18-yard box, and she was determined to get a goal tonight. Had a few go just wide, had an assist on the first goal. Cassie Toftru having herself quite the match for the Trojans. Now the boxer's going to have to go in a full press right here. There's actually going to be a free kick coming up here for the Trojans. And sometimes if you have a team like this that is going to be in a full press, your defense is, uh, you know, going to be playing much more higher than they normally would. And a team like Bridgewater Rainham, you can't do that to. As you see, they have the ability to strike and strike quickly. That one is played in. For Caitlin Reardon, plays that one up ahead. And Jenna Quill is going to clear this one out. No, it's actually going to be kept alive. Nope, never mind. Not going to be kept alive by Coelho. It's going to be in a direct free kick. Just under 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Trojans with a 2-0 lead, courtesy of goals from Ava Forbes-Smith and Cassie Toftaru. Toftaru, a, a two-point night for her. Goal and an assist. This one's sent in. And that's going to be cleared out by Allen. 
Boxers, though, still have possession of the ball. Chelsea Bourne trying to get through two Trojans defenders, and she's going to get tripped up. And it'll be a free kick coming up here for the Boxers. Free kick to be taken by Chelsea Bourne, it looks like. I beg your pardon, that's actually going to be Lena Marion now who's going to be taking the direct free kick from just outside the 18-yard box. So now under nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Marion's free kick still in the box, but it's going to be cleared out by the Trojans, but not completely, though, as Jessica Davis is now tracking this one down, and she's able to kick this one out. And that might be an indirect free kick for the Trojans. It is. I'm going to say that one went off of Manzueta, another one of the freshmen on this Brockton Boxers squad. And that'll be the day for Emily Fox. Unbelievable save that she made in the first half to keep the game at 1-0 for the Trojans. Looks like they're going to bring in Megan Aronoff now to be the goalkeeper for the Trojans. A junior. Excellent work on the day for Emily Fox. And hopefully the Trojans can hold on to this 2-0 lead and stay undefeated on the season. Brockton, though, at least want to cut into that lead and not get shut out here on the road. So is that Brockton undefeated away from Marciano Stadium? Aronoff's free kick is going to be kept alive by Toftaru. Able to find Coelho now. And that's going to be turned over by Jessica Davis. Towards the top of the box. Looking for Marion. Now is able to find the left foot. And a shot on goal. And that's going to be easily saved by Aronoff. That was shot taken by Manzueta. I know I said if you have the shot, take it. But from that distance and with two defenders that you have to split. Don't know if that was... Necessarily the smartest shot, although it did get it through to Megan Aronoff, but it was an easy save. Do you like to see that out of the freshman, not afraid to take a shot? I feel like a lot of underclassmen, you know, may be a little timid to take that shot when they have an upperclassman right around them. But again, half this roster is underclassmen, so someone's going to have to take it, right? Someone's going to have to be this leader on this young squad for this Brockton Boxers girls varsity team. We have a slew of substitutions for the Trojans and a couple of them for the Brockton Boxers. Under eight minutes left now in the fourth quarter. Still a 2-0 lead for the Trojans. A fourth quarter goal courtesy of Cassie Toftru. She was just determined to get the ball in the net tonight. She was able to do so. Also has an assist on the first goal of the evening. Contact there, and that's going to be a free kick for the boxers. Looks like Fernandez got fouled there for Brockton. As we said earlier, check in on Bridgewater Television's Facebook page and on our website, btvaccess.com, and our YouTube channel. Just search BTV Access Corp. Bridgewater Random, another opportunity here, and that's going to get stopped, though, by the boxers. Check out on all BTV programming and past BR Girls soccer game and other athletic events. A shot on net from Ava Forbes-Smith looking for goal number two from distance, and that was easily saved by Olmstead. Check out Jeff Fowler's weather forecast and Bridgewater Now updates with John Luck. Also check out on Out of Bounds, small town views on big town sports with John Luck and Mary Evers, as well as some other programming on BTV, including Four Deep Sports Talk with Dominic Damiano. Has a brand new website. I hope I advise you all to check that out, fourdeepsportstalk.com. A lot of good stuff there. And of course, if you check it out on btvaccess.com, you have the ability to download it and have it in your archives forever. Bridgewater Rainham's next home game is going to be, the, for the girls, is going to be their last home game. It'll be senior day for them on the 30th, the night before Halloween. It'll be at 5.30 p.m. against the New Bedford Whalers for the boys' soccer team. They have a home game coming up against West Bridgewater. 
And they also have a game. Is Bridgewater Random has this in the box. It's shot in. That's going to be cleared out. Boys have a game on the 4th at 4 p.m. against Durfee. And their senior day will be on November the 6th at 4 p.m. against Dartmouth. Both the girls in soccer, uh, bo wow, both the girls and boys soccer senior nights can be seen on Bridgewater television. We'll have the pregame festivities for you as well. Also check out Channel 9 in Bridgewater. See some old uh, Bridgewater Random Athletic events. And I also forgot to mention too, if you go on our YouTube page and our on-demand page on our website, check out the latest school committee meetings and town council meetings. And now because of this COVID-19 outbreak, a lot of your subcommittees now are meeting on Zoom and they're recording it. So a lot of subcommittee meetings. If you care to watch those, a lot of programming coming up here for Bridgewater Television as Forbes Smith now has this one, tries to get around three boxer defenders and that's going to be a foul on Forbes Smith. A few minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Looks like the Trojans, and I don't want to jinx this, but it looks like the Trojans are on their way to win number six on the season. If the results hold, Brockton will move below 500 on the season to two and three, and they would go to two and one on the road. Bridgewater Rainham would improve to 4 0 at home. Reynoso to take the free kick for the Boxers. Just a little shy of Jara Rodriguez. And we're going to get a free kick coming up here for the Trojans. This one played up ahead. Toftru was able to play that off her right thigh. Played back, though, for the boxes, but Bridgewater Rain was able to get it. Nice turn right there from Coelho. Coelho again is going to try and win possession of this one and is able to do so. And it'll be an indirect free kick taken by her on the near touch line. Plays that one for Ava Forbes-Smith. A lot of room for Forbes-Smith. Passes that one up ahead. Able to find Lillian Ford. And Brockton's able to clear this one out. And it'll go out of bounds. And another indirect free kick coming up here for the BR Trojans. Forbes Smith, nice move. Get around uh, two Brockton boxers defenders. Even better dribbling right here from McKenna Columbus here. Finds Toftru. Can Toftru get number two on the night? Plays that one into the box. And no one home. That's going to be cleared out by the boxers. You have to love the game that Cassie Toftru was playing tonight. Just all over the field for the Trojans. Really going to have to rely on her. And they have this season after losing Rosalie Darianani last year. The Trojans did. As Forbes Smith now has this. Still beats two boxer defenders. Able to pass this one off to Cassie Toftru. Toftru now in towards the top of the box. And that's going to be cleared out, though, by the boxers. Nice job right there from Bianca Reynoso. Though turns it right back over. And Liliana Coelho has this one, but gets dispossessed there by Chelsea Bourne. Bourne in a foot race with Cassie Toftru. Toftru is able to win that one. This is the one up for Forbes Smith. Forbes Smith. Looking maybe for McKenna Columbus, sophomore midfielder. Can't connect with her. Clock is stopped at two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Bridgewater Rainham looking to stay undefeated on the season and move to 6 0. Whitkiss now plays this one up ahead for the Trojans. Senior defender finds Forbes Smith. A lot of space. Passes that one up just a little behind Lillian Ford. Brockton's able to clear that one out, but not out. Giving chase was Abigail Stack, senior midfielder. Stack now, once again, is in a battle, and it's going to go out of bounds off of Kiara Reynoso. Actually, they're going to say that went off of Bridgewater Random, so it'll be a free kick. Kiara Reynoso to take this one and pass it off to her sister, Bianca Reynoso. Bounces around on that far touchline. Sent back in. 
And this should be the end of the game. It's been quite a two minutes here. And the ref is telling her to not kick it. And that is going to be your final. Bridgewater Rainham gets the 2-0 victory over Brockton. Courtesy of Ava Forbes-Smith and Cassie Tofteroo.